Next up, Woo! at UFC 302, we got Phil Rowe. Philly Fresh, baby. Taking on Jake Matthews. This could be an interesting fight. Philly Rowe is the underdog in this fight, and I kind of get it, especially if you watch his last fight and really absorbed those decisions in that fight IQ. But we got Phil Rowe, 10 and 4 in his career. He is 3 and 2 in his last five. He is coming off that decision loss to Neil Magny. He's taking on Jake Matthews, 19 and 7 in his career, 2 and 3 in his last five. He's coming off that decision loss to Michael Morales. Philip Rowe is very good. He's crazy tall for this weight class. Good volume striker. Does a great job using that length, using that range. His ground game is good as well. Almost like a Kevin Holland, right? Good striker, good jujitsu. But for some reason, he decided to wrestle in his last fight. He can be hittable as well. He does have a negative striking differential, which is surprising for a guy that's as good of a striker and as long as he is. He should not be getting hit more often than he's hitting his opponents. He is coming off that frustrating loss to Neil Magny where it was obvious he could win that fight. It was very, very clear Neil Magny can win this fight. But then he would clinch, then he would grapple, then he would try to shoot takedowns and lost the fight. He gave the fight away. And the, the insane decisions he was making in that fight cost him and I hope he learned from those mistakes. He's taking on Jake Matthews. Jake Matthews, I'm going to say the words, he's a well-rounded guy. Jake Matthews is very similar to to um, who the hell did I break down last week? I'm forgetting his name. Uh, oh, a Richie Lang. Oh. He's very similar to a Richie Lang last week where I said he can strike, he can wrestle, but he doesn't do both at the same time. Last week, a Richie Lang was a wrestler. He went all in the wrestling, didn't bother striking. And Jake Matthews is one or the other. He either is a powerful striker with big, fast right hands or a wrestler. He doesn't typically go out there and mix things up well. His last fight is a perfect example. He went out there, he attempted one single takedown against Michael Morales, and then just got outstruck the rest of that fight. But Jake Matthews does have some power. He can wrestle, and if he was able to tie it all together really well and transition between the two, he'd be a force. But he's a bit inconsistent because he will only pick one lane at a time. This is a tough fight. This is a tough fight to pick, but if I did not see the odds, and Jacob and I have talked about this many times, when we do our research, our picks, our notes, and all that, we don't, I, I don't look at the odds ahead of time. I don't look at them. And when I'm doing the breakdowns and stuff, the odds aren't even up on Tapology yet. So I just look at it, who I think is going to win, and go from there. Sometimes it's pretty obvious. In this case, I thought Phil Rowe was going to be the favorite because Jake Matthews is wildly inconsistent. Phil Rowe is long, tall, hits hard, he does all of those things. I was like, yeah, I was like, what is he? Is that Loita to the bomb. chat? Because when I'm doing this, I got the chat covered. Loita bomb. I thought Phil was going to be the favorite. I picked Phil to win. I do think Phil was going to win. The only reason I haven't bet, it's hard to trust. It's hard to trust him. After the decisions he made in that last fight, it is hard to trust him. And if Jake Matthews decides to be the striker version of himself, Phil wins this fight. If Jake Matthews decides to be the wrestler version of himself, Jake wins this fight. So I need two things to happen here for Phil to win. We need Jake to want to strike, and we need Phil to not make terrible decisions. Phil is going to be the pick. I trust him. I think that last loss, he's in a good team. He's training with good people. He's a smart guy. All the frustrations that we had watching that fight, I am positive him and his team had that after, and hopefully those mistakes won't be made again. Phil Rowe is my pick. What do you think, Jakey boy? Yeah, I'm a, obviously, I just talked about that with the Nico fight. Phil Rowe, that's my dog, man. I mean, he was a, a, a former lock of the week, one of the greatest lock of the weeks of all time, the greatest finish against Nico. Um, I, I also was surprised I broke down this fight because Jake Matthews is a, a definitely a very well-rounded guy, but he doesn't really shine anywhere. He's like super solid kind of everywhere. He's probably better on the ground than he is with the striking. Uh, against Morales, you know, he, he, he definitely held his own in that fight, but he, he just doesn't seem like he's overly dominant anywhere against a guy like Phil Rowe. But, like you said, I had that lock of the week win versus Nico. I came in against Neil Magny and I said Philip Rowe is going to fucking smoke Neil Magny. And what did I say? Going into that fight, I said, all he got to do, Philly, all he got to do, Philly, is back this guy up against the fence because Neil's just going to casually back up to the fence, stay at range, and just fucking box this dude's head off, and you're going to probably get a first-round knockout because Neil Maddie cannot strike with you. And what did Phil Rowe do? 
He came in. He backed him up. He boom, boom, boom. Strike, strike. It looked like, oh, here we go. Philly, we're doing it. And then he lunges in for the clinch and spent the next 15 <laughs> fucking minutes clinching Neil Magny. Everybody knows the only way that you're going to lose to Neil Magny is if you get in a clinch position with him, let you wear him. He's going to wear you down in those, because that's what he loves to do. Eventually, he's going to trip, take you down. You saw the exact same thing with Mike Malott. He just weather storms. He clinches with you. He makes it dirty, gets you on the ground, and then he is going to try to finish you on the ground. I don't know if that was just a a, far, a brain fart from Phil in that fight. If that was a game planning thing, if there was somebody in your camp, Phil, that said, we're going to clinch with this guy, we're going to get dirty with this, and we're going to try to wrestle this guy, that guy should be fucking fired. That's just the way it is. You don't clinch Neil Magny. And ever since that fight, it's a, he's just a hard guy to trust. I'm with you, Angelo. He's just a hard... He should smoke... In my mind, he should smoke Jake Matthews. He should stay at range. Outbox this guy. If Jake takes a shot, use your offense. Threaten that front choke. Get a reversal. Let's use some... To, get, to be able to get back your feet. I wouldn't, like, mess around too much on the ground with Jake Matthews. But you have the, the, the grappling to keep this standing. And you have the striking to win this fight. I'm... I, I'm going Jake Matthews. I, I was just, gonna say you texted me like we have four different picks or whatever know, to five, I, I, and then I'm you going, said Jake. I, like everything I'm he's going, saying, I know I'm going. <laughs> I'm going Jake Matthews because I just think that he is. It's gonna come down in my mind to. I think this is gonna be a close fight. I think this is probably gonna be a decision fight, and in my mind, it's gonna come down to pace, pressure, and volume. And I know that Jake Matthews is going to be in his face. He's probably going to have the more volume. And unless Phil can kind of touch this guy and hurt this guy, I think that's going to be enough. I think Phil's just not going to do enough to win rounds. And Jake Matthews is going to sneak out this decision. So I'm going Jake Matthews here. But, I mean, Phil's still my boy. I'm going to be rooting for Phil. I hope he proves me wrong. I hope he smokes this guy. But as far as being an, uh, a capper and making picks, I like the volume of Jake in this fight. If he's all, if he goes all in on the wrestling, he'll have some success. I mean, we saw Trevor Witt, not Trevor Witt. Is it he Trevor went Witt? Toe no, to Witt. toe in his last fight in the striking, just fine. Uh, yeah, but Michael Morales can be a little low volume at times. There you, but ding, um, ding ding. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, we are we are on opposite sides of this one. I, you know, I think I think everybody, I think most normal people would look at this and have the same... You and I had the exact same read. And we Phil just picked on a different too. side. He's definitely not a fucking quitter. He will grind. Yeah. I mean, he that, that, that versus Nico, too. I mean, he was... It looked like he was down and out, landed his shot, but he definitely will slow down. He's a well, big you guy. And I, it's a big weight cut. What's funny is we literally had the exact same read, but we just picked the opposite side. We well, just said the exact Jake same thing. Wrestle. I don't think he needs to wrestle. I do think he does need to wrestle, but... Yeah, um, yeah. Well, and I, and I need Phil to not make poor decisions. Which is, we'll find out. I do like Phil at seventy nine hundred dollars. Now it goes against most things that I say when I say DraftKings wants wrestlers or finishes, and I don't think Phil Rowe is going to wrestle, so he's not going to score points there. And I don't know if he's going to finish, but I do think there could be some decent volume, and I do think he can crack Jake, Ma Jake Matthews. Phil Rowe has done this before, as you've said, weather some storms, late finishes. Phil Rowe doesn't lose all his power after the first round. He does have some late finishes. He's so precise. That's what I mean. That's yeah. what that what was so frustrating about the Neil because you you saw it. You saw the extended, long, clean strike just right on the button at the very end of the punch against Neil, and then he just starts hugging him. It's like, dude, get back. To, you're <laughs> such a good striker. You're such a good boxer. Get back to space, man. Come on, Philly. That loss might be the best thing that happened to him. He was I feeling so. himself, or a little, you know, it might literally be the best thing that happened to him. So I'm gonna ride with Phil. Jakey boys on the other side of this. If you do want to unlock the picks, the bets, the round line leans, and everything else, it's only $10 for an entire month. UFC 302 will be your first event, and you can get all the way to UFC 303 with that $10. We want picks.com. Click become a member at the top. We'll be right back. Are you going somewhere? People are saying Dr. Phil, so I did the uh, Dr. Phil thing. Ooh, oh, right that's there. what that was? Before you go, let me give you $50. Anybody who goes to wewantpicks.com slash bets and signs up with any one of our affiliate partners gets $50 as a thank you. Use the link, sign up, make a deposit. We send you 50 bucks 
as a thank you.